Hey cruisers, happy Mother's Day weekend and happy Mother's Day to all of our wonderful tribe out there. We love all of you guys and we're so happy to have you here. Today's episode is sponsored by cruiseline.com where you can find reviews, tips and photos from real everyday cruisers. Today we're doing a very special giveaway at the end of our live stream in the last 10 minutes. I'm going to remind you guys to tell us in the live chat how you use cruiseline.com and Shipmate app, and we are going to randomly select a winner um, after the live stream saves to replay to win a Travelon ID and passport holder. These things are awesome. This is the very nerd wallet that I wear all the time on my cruises that you see hanging around my neck. It's the coolest thing ever. So we're gonna give one of these away. So wait for my cue, don't do it now. It's gonna be between 12.50 and one o'clock. You're gonna tell us how you use Shipmate app and cruiseline.com for a chance to win. So today, you guys, it's general Q&A the entire hour. Give me just a few minutes to get through some housekeeping items and our a very cool surprise announcement before you start typing in your questions or we may miss them. I do expect that it's going to be very busy in the live chat today. Mr. Cruise Tips TV will do his very best to get all of the questions kind of queued up for me. But if you could please be patient and know that you may have to retype the question, generally gets a lot quieter in the second half hour. So if you wanna just hang out and wait a little bit, that's always great too. So I know that a lot of you you guys have been um, hearing me talk about a surprise that's coming this week and I'm just gonna come right out and tell you right now what it is we myself and junior editor have been invited to go on the two night inaugural Norwegian bliss cruise from Los Angeles in two weeks and we are so excited so we got an invitation for two people uh, mr. Chris tips TV has to work so the little guy and I are going to be packing a bag It's a very very short cruise out of Los Angeles I don't even know if we're leaving the dock yet I don't have any details I don't know our room what type of room we're gonna get I know nothing other than we are so so excited to preview Norwegian Bliss for you guys. Now, if everything goes well with our technology, I'm taking my phone and I'm going to try to do a YouTube live stream from the ship on Friday, May 25th. Now, as you guys may know, a lot of times what happens, especially when you get a bunch of media people on a ship, is that the bandwidth could get totally depleted and I may not have enough strength with my YouTube connection to go live that day because I anticipate everybody's gonna be trying to get footage and go live because it is a media event. So please be patient with me if I can't make it happen. We are going to vlog our two-day cruise. It should be really, really fun. Junior editor and I are going to be doing a combination of work and play. So here's our plan, just so you guys know. Um, we are going to, I wanna do my best to make it fun for him too, because I'm asking a lot of him on this little short cruise. I'm gonna be asking him to be my photographer. I'm gonna ask him to take pictures of the ship for you guys because he's developed a real talent for it. The photos are gonna be from 48 inches because he's a little guy right now, but he has really become good at photography so he's gonna be doing the photography and we're gonna vlog our whole cruise so he'll probably be helping to film mommy a lot of the time but at the same time I really want him to have fun so he's asked me if on the first day we can go straight to the arcade and of course I said yes because I want him to have some fun and you know how it goes with kids you kind of have to you kind of have to feed the meter a little bit to get back the cooperation so that's my plan we will try to get on the water slides i have heard that on these inaugural cruises it's nearly impossible to get a reservation on the um, go-karts but we will absolutely try and they do have two seaters so i know that um, i can take my son he can sit right next to me he doesn't have to drive his own unless he wanted to but i really don't think we're going to be able to get a reservation from my research i've learned from the new york and the miami inaugurals it has been really hard and I imagine that it, you know, we probably won't have that happen, but I'll get footage of it. So I would love to hear from you guys today about what you'd like us to try to film on the ship. Um, I will not be able to do a full ship tour by any means, but I plan to get as many highlights as I can, especially of the new areas, like the racetrack, of course, right? The go-kart track, um, Q the smokehouse, um, the, lo the lobby, which I think will be very beautiful. It's kind of different and the um, just the overall design of the ship. So any new feature, I will do my very, very best to film for you all. So that's our big surprise. That's what we have been trying to keep a secret for the last week. I just found out earlier in the week and we, believe me, we are really, really excited. I wish we had more time on the ship because I know that it's gonna be a little bit frustrating to get it all done in a day and a half. We board on Friday afternoon. We have two nights on the ship. So Saturday's our only full day and then we're probably gonna have to be off the ship by Sunday morning at 8.30. So as you can imagine, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a marathon for the little guy. 
and for me, um, but we're gonna do our best to bring you guys some fun. So let's pop into the chat, see what kind of questions are coming in, and we will certainly keep you posted on um, any news about Norwegian Bliss, and if we're going to go live, I will do everything I possibly can to alert you guys to the time on social media. So it's more important than ever that you guys are following us on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. I put probably post the most on Facebook and it's a really quick way for me to get news out to you all. But if you're familiar with the community tab here on YouTube, the community tab is actually just an area that I have the liberty of posting anything I want and it will go into your YouTube feed. So if you ever see like a note from um, one of the YouTube channels that you subscribe to with just a photograph or something, that's the community tab. It's really cool, it's a new feature and you have to have a certain number of subscribers to get access to it. We got access to it a little bit earlier this year and it's been really fun because I don't, it, I don't just show up in your feed when I have a new video. I can show up in your feed whenever I want to tell you something. So be sure that you've got your notifications on. Be sure you're subscribed and we'll keep you posted. Hello to everybody that just joined. We're so happy to have you here. And I'm going to go ahead and try to, um, to get to some questions that are a little bit higher up in the chat. I'm going to scroll up and we're just going to get started. Hi, mom. I saw that you're here. I hadn't told you yet about the bliss, had I? So now you know. <laughs> um, let's see here. All right. Let's scroll up and see where we can start. Mr. Cruise TV, are you queuing up a bunch of questions for me too? Not yet. He's too busy saying hi to everybody. I know how he rolls. Huh? No questions? Oh, okay. All right. Let's see if we can uh, scroll down a bit and see what everybody is up to. John Pagani would love to hear people's thoughts on lounger hogging. Royal Caribbean has a policy of removing belongings after 30 minutes, but they never do. What does one do? If you can't beat them, join them. John, oh, I tell you, that is definitely one of my pet peeves as well. Certain cruise lines are tightening up their policies on chair hogging. My recommendation to you is when you see it happening that you do uh, you do alert poolside staff of what's happening and they generally, if you tell someone, they will generally remove those people's belongings and keep them safe at the towel hut or wherever they can. Every ship handles it really differently but some of them are getting a lot more strict about it. So um, that's something that, that we're hoping to see happen. Um, as far as the you can't beat them, join them, I don't have the heart to do that yet. I just can't because I don't spend that much time by the pool. But I think that probably the best strategy is just to take it, to allow the staff to handle it. That's my opinion. Deceptions wants to know what is the best thing to do in Bermuda. I've never been to Bermuda, so if anybody else has any input, please let us know. Douglas wants to know if we're planning on doing a Hawaiian cruise. Douglas, yes, we'd love to do a Hawaiian cruise. I think it'd be very difficult for me to get 15 days off of work to do the coastal one, so the ones that go from LA or San Francisco out and back. They have five sea days on either side, so they're 15 night cruises. I don't think I can do that with work, but what I'd like to do is fly out to the islands and do that. So hopefully I can do that someday. All right. Okay. Brandy said, can you set my nerves at ease? I've seen a post on NASA that are not too positive. Brandy, um, Brandy I... Nassau is not my favorite port, but there are certainly a lot of wonderful things to do there. Please don't give up on it. Just do some research and don't just plan to walk off the ship. Roxanne wants to know what is there to do on your own in Grand Cayman. Roxanne, if it was me, if it, the first thing that I thought of when you asked me that question is on your own is I would just see if I could get a cab for the day, so pay a cab driver for the day to take me to some of the best beaches in town. I think that would be such a great um a great thing to do and I've always kind of wanted to just take a little island tour there. You can also shop right off the port. There's loads of shopping. There's also lots and lots of restaurants and things like that. Did I, wait a minute, did I, oh you said Grand Cayman. Oh you know what, Grand Cayman, I think the same thing applies. There are a lot of people in Grand Cayman, Roxanne, who um, actually take a cab or walk to this bar where you can snorkel right off of the reef right by the bar. If anybody knows the name of that restaurant or bar, please do let me know. I would appreciate the help. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone, for all of the congratulations um, about the preview cruise for Norwegian. We are really, really excited about it. And yeah, I think I think Junior Editor is going to do a very good job, and I think it's going to be an excellent opportunity for him to um, not only have fun and experience a ship that he is so excited about, you guys. This is a big deal for him. He is into the bliss. He wants to go do that laser tag more than anything 
on any cruise anywhere that he wants to do. So this is a good opportunity. It's also a good opportunity for him to rise to the occasion and be mom's helper. So we're really excited. Okie dokie. Um, I don't know, Carolyn, if they've fixed the problem with not being able to reserve dining and shows online. I saw Cruising and Wheel with Wheels had to make some phone calls about that as well. Raising the Jacksons said, what is your favorite Catalina and Ensenada excursions? Um, I love renting a golf cart in um, on Catalina Island and driving it around. If you've never been to Catalina and you're physically able to rent a golf cart and drive it around for the day, please do that. It's so fun and it's so rugged and it's just such a great way to, to start. Um, if you wanted to snorkel or scuba dive, you could do that as well. It's pretty, pretty bold and cold, but you could definitely do it. Maria wants to know what there is to do. Let's see here. Uh, in Montego Bay, Jamaica, does the little port entry building have shops or seating tables? Let's let Maria know, guys. If, um, if we know about that, I know we've got a ton um, of questions coming in. Okay, L. Griffin said, do you recommend purchasing the Pixel package on Carnival? If you can afford the Pixel package and your party is going to take maybe, I would say if you're gonna take 10 or more photos that you want to keep, formal portraits particularly, I would recommend the Pixel package, yes. Um, John Heal did announce that they did recently re- adjust the price down to a better price. So I think what happened is they had a certain price for it, they had several packages, they raised the price, everybody got mad, and then they lowered it. Um, all right, let's see here, okay. Diana is asking, where does Bliss sail from? Diana, it's sailing from a lot of different places. Right now, Bliss is on a journey through the Panama Canal, a 15 night uh, journey from May 10th to the 25th through the Panama Canal. It will then stop in Los Angeles for a short preview cruise and then make its way up to Seattle where it will spend the summer in Seattle doing cruises to Alaska. It will then come for a short visit back down to our West Coast for a series of Mexican Riviera cruises in September, October, around then. It will then make its way back through the Panama Canal and spend its first season in the Caribbean. It is then going to be coming back to Alaska next year. So this, this ship, while it is purpose-built for Alaska, supposedly, it is going to be doing a lot of different itineraries, which is really, really exciting. Okay, let's see here. Um, I've never used Avoya Lushy 77. I probably wouldn't. I prefer using a brick and mortar travel agent, honestly. So that's a short answer, but that would be the best answer I could give you. Um, David Pace once has a question about what internet package would you recommend that you get? David, if you can afford it, I would recommend that you get the premium package because then you just don't have to think about it. You don't have to worry about it. I think that's probably what I would do. Jennifer is looking for some excursion ideas in La Romana, Curacao, and Aruba. If anybody has any excursion ideas for her, that would be great. Okay, Jennifer said they canceled all Pixel packages except for the five photo one canvas for $99. Oh, that's disappointing, Jennifer. I didn't know that. Oh, how strange. So they didn't want to do the unlimited thing anymore? How weird. Okay, Tamara wants to know, can you hear other people in the cabins next to you? Tamara, the answer to that varies greatly on the cruise and it depends on the people next to you. Most of the time, my answer is no. But sometimes my answer is absolutely you can. If they're playing loud music, if they're shouting, if they're, um, their children are jumping on the beds and running into the walls, then you might be able to. It's just really different on every cruise. If you're on a cruise that's really loud and obnoxious and there's a lot of partiers and you know it's raucous, then you're more likely to. But I've, I've had cruises where I never heard anything except a toilet flush. You'll almost always hear your neighbor's toilet flush. You hear people in the halls. You hear people in the halls a little more. That's very accurate. Very true. Um, Jake wanted to know if we're going on Independence of the Seas soon. No, Jake, we don't have plans to. Um, Lily VSG, what are our favorite sea day activities? Lily, we made a video about that. I think it was our top 10 sea day activities from October of last year. Go check that out, but I could tell you some of them will be going to, we like going to high tea if we're sailing on Princess. Um, I like walking the decks, getting exercise, taking photos, sitting in the hot tubs, swimming, um, drinking before noon. <laughs> It's terrible, right? Uh, whatever is relaxing to you. Melody, I think, I'm not sure if you're asking me what ports that I'll be in. I have no idea if we're even stopping in Ensenada on the Bliss Cruise or if it's a cruise to nowhere or if it's staying in port, but I will keep you posted. Okay. Oh my goodness sakes. Okay. We've got some uh, 
some questions coming in. Bear with me, you guys. This is moving really fast. Stacy wants to know, when does Faster to the Fun become available on a Carnival Cruise? It varies a lot, Stacy, but it usually becomes available when the shore excursions become available. So I want you to look in the shore excursions area, okay? Anita, do we ever river cruise? We haven't yet because we have a small child and he's not allowed to, and he travels everywhere with us, but eventually we hope to do that. Okay. Let's see here. Um, we haven't, Lushy, we have not been to Greece. We've been to Europe and lived in Europe, but I've never been to Greece, but we definitely would love to. I'd love to do a Mediterranean cruise. Okay. Let's get some more questions here. I know we have a lot more coming in. Oh, hi, Arij. You changed your username. Nice to see you here. Okay. Um, hmm. A lot of people commenting on the noise in the staterooms and saying they haven't heard much in their, um, in, from the people next to them. Okay. All right. Heather has an excellent question. Aside from making sure we're back to the ship and on, and on time, what are a few must-know tips for scheduling shore excursions not through Royal Caribbean? Heather, I want to let you know, I feel like a broken record when I say this, we did make a video about this very, very recently. So scroll back and watch the video that says, I think it's called something like five tips. Um, if you're self-booking excursions, but some of the tips would be as follows. Number one, make sure that you're very aware of the fact that shore time and ship time may not be the same and that you need to take a digital wristwatch with you most likely because our electronic devices these days and our Apple watches and all of that stuff, um, these digital watches can change. So you need to make sure you know what time it is on shore and on the ship. You need to have some kind of a printed reservation and a copy of the cancellation policy from the tour provider that you're booking with. I also suggest that a few days before your tour that you email the tour provider and verify that your tour is still confirmed. Okay, all right. Mr. Wigandave said, do I know when Royal Caribbean will release the itineraries for Spectrum of the Seas? No, I don't, but we'll certainly put a news release out over on Facebook and Twitter when we hear about that. Um, Kelly wants to know, favorite excursions with kids in Key West? Hopefully someone can give her some suggestions. I've never been to Key West. Okay, Tamara said, our 10th anniversary trip on Bliss in September and we can't wait. Um, should we pack really warm clothes in the middle of September? Tamara, are you on an Alaska sailing? If so, yes, you certainly should um, pack warm clothes and a lot of rain protection because the chance of rain increases greatly. You guys, thank you so much. Lalita Loca just gave us a $10 super chat. Thank you so much. If you guys have not checked out their YouTube channel, it is so much fun. They are also cruise vloggers. They do all kinds of fun things from live streams to these cool like showdowns and stuff. I saw part of your recent one, you guys. It was so cute. What a fun collaboration. So check out their um, their YouTube channel if you haven't already. Such a, such a an awesome, awesome couple. We love you guys. Um, let's see what other questions we have. Okay, Lalita Loco has a question. I'm sorry, I didn't see that associated with it first. What cruise line would you recommend for us to cruise next? We've only done Carnival and we're thinking Royal or Princess. I think you guys should consider um, Royal or Princess, but I also think you should consider Norwegian. I think, remind me where you live. Are you in the Carolinas? Because I feel like it really depends. You know, we don't want to say you should drive forever or fly somewhere that's too expensive to go on your next cruise. But I think you guys might really like Norwegian as well. Um, I think Princess, I mean, if you like a more subdued cruise experience, generally speaking, Princess is. There's a lot of things we really love about Princess, like the heated pools and the food is good and getting better in my opinion. Royal Caribbean is awesome if you like big ships. I get a little intimidated, you guys, with the bigger ships. So, you know, it's it's kind of a tough thing, but I hope that helps you a little bit. Feel free to message me offline too if you want to talk more about it, but I could totally see you guys on like Norwegian Getaway, Norwegian Bliss, something like that, grooving on it, really good specialty dining. And I, I like the specialty dining on Norwegian so much. Thank you so much, Heather, for the super chat. We appreciate you. Okay, yes, thank you. Okay, guys, Lalita Loca said they call it the cruise wars battles. It's really funny. They kind of duke it out with, with different opinions. It's like a debate, a cruise debate. So you got to check it out. Okay, Jennifer Hudgens says, what all is there to do at the El Cid in Mazatlan? So Jennifer and I have been talking on social media this week. She's going on a Mexican Riviera cruise and has heard us talk about the fact that when we go to Mazatlan, we take a taxi cab to the El Cid resort. Um, we go to the El Cid Marina and we just walk into the resort and we go to the pool and we order food and drinks and we spend money there, but we also just spend the day at the pool and they've never really stopped us. This is a known thing on forums. People do it all the time. We're not being that naughty. 
But Jennifer, what there is to do mostly at the El Cid Marina is to, to swim in their pool. They actually have this, um, this grotto and this rock formation that you can jump off of. And it's a Mr. Cruz TV. Is it like 15 feet high or 10 feet high? The grotto at El Cid? Mr. Cruz Soups TV, you know this, that thing you can jump off in Mazatlan at El Cid? Is it like 10 or 15 feet high, do you think? Yeah, it's so fun. And there's a grotto you can swim in. Other than that, you're just hanging out by the pool all day, Jennifer. There's not a whole lot to do. Now, um, another YouTuber, The Traveling Islanders, has an awesome video on their experience at the El Cid El Moro, where they, got, they bought a day pass and they had all the food and drink they could, they could have, and it looked really fun, and they also had a similar rock formation type pool. So, yeah. Okay, yeah, Carolyn said Norwegian Getaway is awesome too. I'm hearing really good things about that class of Norwegian ship, so I can see that. Okay, anybody have a private guide recommendation for Bonnie Lee for Santorini? She would probably need some help there. Um, Raising the Three Jacksons, you're in California. What cruise line would you recommend? Well, you have some options, Raising the Jacksons, and some of them might surprise you. Um, in California, in LA and Long Beach, you have your choice between Carnival, Princess, and Norwegian. Norwegian Bliss is coming down here for the season if you wanna do a new exciting ship. This September, October, you might wanna jump on one of those ships and um, give those a try. Although Carnival is also wonderful and Splendor is still sailing here. Carnival Panorama will be coming to um, California next year. So another good new ship option and Princess has some wonderful options as well. You have a ton of options. Again, if you wanna talk about it privately, message me on Facebook. If you're on Facebook or slide into my DMs over on Instagram and let's talk about who you and your family are so that I can give you the best advice. Ooh, Tommy from Always Be Booked Cruises and Vacations is here and gave us a super chat. Thank you, Tommy. How's your leg? Are you recovering? And how's the new job? <laughs> I love your latest, um, your latest podcast with Doug. It was really, really fun. So great, great interview. Okay, let's see what else we've got going on here. How's everybody doing? We've got some good questions coming in. Jane, going to Alaska in September on Princess for your honeymoon because of our video. Oh, that's wonderful to hear. You're going to love it. Um, I think Princess is very wonderful for romantic cruises. So enjoy that and congratulations. It's so exciting. Okay. Um, wow, that's an interesting one, Cindy. What is everybody's favorite part of the cruise? Cindy, I got to tell you, I get such a high on embarkation day. Would anybody else agree with me? that embarkation day is just the best thing ever. Mr. Cruise Sims TV said it really well one time. He said, I like embarkation day because everything is out ahead of me, right? Like your cocktail in hand, standing on your balcony or up on the pool deck at Sail Away, the wind is blowing through your hair, the music is playing, and the whole cruise is ahead of you. I don't think there's any better feeling than that to me but let's see what everybody else has to say. Gladiator, the best cruise line is the best cruise line for you. That's a really hard one. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and tell you, you need to give me more information about yourself so I can help you out a little bit, a little bit more um, with a special recommendation. Okay, Jessica wants to know if there's really a butler <laughs> on Norwegian in the Haven. Okay, let's see here. More questions coming in. Um, Tamara, yes, you really have to be on the ship a few hours before it leaves when you're at ports. Oh, no, no. When you're in ports, generally not two hours before it leaves, but that's a recommendation from people who don't like the idea of rushing or risking not getting back. Aaron, I agree. Going under the Golden Gate Bridge is one of the best experiences ever on a cruise. I would agree with you. It gives me chills just thinking about it. And if you saw our... Grand Princess Embarkation Day vlog from last summer's Alaska, you can see and feel. We tried to communicate that experience through our vlog. So, yeah, okay. Um, Canada said, hey guys, any suggestions of things to do in Cancun or Riviera Maya? Are you doing that? Um, Canada, are you doing that as a land vacation or a cruise? Because my recommendations would be very, very different for you if you're going there on a cruise. Are you talking about going to Cancun um, for the day while you're in, um, while you're on um, Cozumel, when you're stopping Cozumel, or are you going on a land vacation? If you're going on a land voca vacation to Cancun and Riviera Maya, you got to swim in the cenotes. I definitely recommend that you take excursions, go to Playa del Carmen for the day, go shopping. I love Cancun and Playa del Carmen. We've spent a lot of time there 
um, before my son was born particularly, and it's just, it's the bomb. I absolutely love it. And I love all of the outdoor excursions that you can do. We did so many crazy things. We went snorkeling in caves, all kinds of stuff. There's a lot to do there. Um, thank you very much for the congratulations, Canada. Um, Canada is referring you guys to an awesome honor that we received this week from Porthole Cruise voted their um, their top 10 travel influencers. And it was a really unique list of travelers. Really wasn't cruise focused, but we were on the list and we were super, super honored. So thank you for mentioning that. Hi, Cruise Dudes. Hey, Tommy, good to have you here. Um, cruise Dudes' latest issue of Sea Wind was just released, you guys. You gotta get it. It's a digital magazine in your app store. It's called Sea Wind Magazine. And cruise Tips TV is regular, we are regular contributors to it. Hi, Cash Addict Mel. Thank you so much for the super chat. Okay. Carnival Ecstasy is leaving Char Charleston in May 2019. What is taking its place? Oh no, I do not know the answer to that, but we're going to try to find out for you. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Sorry. I don't know the answer off the top of my head. Oh my gosh. And you guys, please forgive me. This is the point usually where it gets a little bit difficult for me to keep up. So I'm doing my very, very best to get all of the questions. Mr. Chris Tips TV, do you have any um, stockpiled back there? Okay, go ahead. I'm ready. Gotta turn your mic on? Okay, well, I'm gonna grab a drink real quick while you do that. Okay, I'm thirsty. so this is from way back. Stephanie wants to know if we pack towels and will two fit in your backpack? Stephanie, and we don't pack our own towels from home, if that's what you're asking. We rely on the cruise line supply of beach towels, which should be waiting for you in your stateroom. And yes, you can usually put two in your backpack. But don't take two if you don't need to on a shore excursion, because sometimes it just weighs you down. Because when you're bringing them back, they're generally wet and heavy, right? So if you can get away with one, especially if you're going to like a hotel or something where they might be providing you with a towel, then don't take two. Okay. Randy wants to know if she should get off the ship in Nassau. You may have a hand. Randy, answer. I don't Brandy, know, Randy. Brandy. Brandy, it's up to you if you get off the ship in Nassau. A lot of people don't, but a lot of people do. Um, if you listen to Tommy at Always Be Booked's podcast, who's here in the chat today, he will tell you that Nassau does not suck. So there are things to do in Nassau. It's up to you. Hey, if you want to stay on the ship, though, and enjoy that ship with a few less people, you're not going to be the only one, but go for it. It's kind of up to you. Okay, Anita, can we video cruise runners on our next cruise? Quite honestly, there haven't been any peer runners on our last few cruises. Usually when we have a balcony cabin, we watch out for peer runners, but there just haven't been any. Usually they're like pulling up the gangway early. I think we cruise on more mellow <laughs> cruises. I don't know why, but I don't see any. Oh my gosh, that's a really funny question. Okay, go ahead. Faye Ray, do cruise lines give better embarkation times the earlier you complete your online registration? I don't know, Fay Ray, about how that science really works or if it's random. I know every line is so different. Some of them even allow you to try to select your own embarkation time, but I think sometimes it's a suggestion and not a rule. So keep that in mind. Joey would like to know if you can use your Starbucks app on the Bliss to pay for coffee and drinks. I doubt it. I don't think you're gonna be able to use your Starbucks app. I just, I, you know, you know how when you're in an airport, you can't do that? I, know, I think it's going to be the same way. I'll check for you, though. I'll check for you. Cash Addict Mel had a good question. He's, he's going to be um, on Carnival, okay. and he, he's toward the front of the ship, and he would like to know if he's more likely to get motion sickness. Yeah, you're more likely to feel the motion. If you get motion sickness, you're more likely to get motion sickness at the front of the ship than anywhere else. On all the cruises I've been on, the roughest ones I've ever experienced were at the front of a ship. And I would actually say we've almost felt the ship slamming on like two of them, like literally going, that's terrible. I should not scare you with that. But um, it's a different motion in the front of the ship and in the back. In the back, it's more vibration and side to side shimmy. In the front, it's a rolling and a slamming sometimes. So that would not be my recommendation for you if you get severely motion sick and if you're expected to have a rough itinerary, which how can you really predict that, right? Like you, it's there, you're, most of these itineraries are not supposed to be rough, but they can end up being that way. So yeah, I'm ready. All right. Uh, Rebecca would like to know if we ever get bored with the same ports of call. Rebecca, sometimes we do get bored with the um, same ports of call. And so what we try to do is really mix up what we do in those ports of call. And, and one of our rules is to try not to repeat anything. Now, not ever. We try not to repeat things back to back. So we might, re we might 
repeat something and then stop repeating for a while and then go back to that thing because we decided we really loved it, which you'll see kind of happening in our Cabo vlogs that we tried a new resort I'm sorry, not Cabo. We tried a new resort in Puerto Vallarta last time, and now we know that we like the usual resort that we used to go through. Thank you, t -Sin, for the super chat. We appreciate that so much. Go ahead. Ruby Craig, what princess ship is the best for a 15-day Panama Canal cruise? Ooh, Ruby, I don't think you're going to have a huge amount of choices on which ships you get to pick. There's probably going to be a limited number going through. I know Princess does have quite a few. Um, you know, they have. They, you have to choose whether or not you want to go all the way through the canal. And if you do, you're going to have to be on one of the smaller ships because they're gonna go through the older locks, right? If you're doing a partial transit and you want to ship with a few more bells and whistles, you can try the newer ship like Caribbean Princess that does partial transit. So I think it's more important for you to worry about the itinerary you want and know that the ship will probably be awesome either way. Wendy is going to Alaska on the Bliss mid-July and wonders about the weather, warm or cool? Ah! Wendy, Alaska's unpredictable. I can't answer that for you. July tends to be relatively nice, but you can definitely get rain. You, you need to pack in layers, and we have loads of videos for you on packing for Alaska. Just go to the videos tab on our channel and type in Alaska. And on this channel and our gear channel, on our cruise gear channel, we talk about outerwear, accessories, and things like that. But you want to start with jeans and t-shirts and then layer with sweatshirts, fleece, rain layers, and take one hat, scarf, and pair of gloves with you. Also, do not forget to take a baseball cap type hat. I know it sounds bizarre, but it is one thing that I will always take on my Alaska cruises now because you can protect yourself from the sun and it's also a teeny tiny rain barrier. What happens in Alaska is when it rains, most people don't use umbrellas. They put their rain jacket on over a baseball cap and the baseball cap keeps your face dry. Isn't that weird? But it's so true. Thank you, Jonna Robinson, for the super chat. Appreciate it. Here's a good question from Lili VSG. Uh -huh. How much do you value or how much value do you put into loyalty programs? Are they really worth it? I think so. I think loyalty programs are worth it. And you have different ways you can approach this. You can choose one line and stick with it and try to work your way up. We kind of are trying to establish loyalty on a few different lines. So we like to mix it up a little bit. But to me, yes, they are worth it. You get things like priority, and priority embarkation. Sometimes you get free cocktails, private lounges, private parties, things like that. Pamela Day, this is a, an older question. Mm -hmm. um, first time cruiser going next May on Royal Caribbean uh -huh. on a seven day cruise and wondering about formal wear. Okay, so what was this person's name again? I'm so sorry guys. Pamela Ade. Pamela, you're wondering about formal wear. Um, okay, so formal wear is a little bit tricky because you have a lot more freedom than you think in what you wanna wear on formal night. You're gonna see everything from sundresses for women to um, cocktail dresses and ball gowns. And for men, you'll see everything from a shirt and a tie to a tux. So. We can definitely answer that question through videos that we've made. Search formal night when you go to our videos and we'll have videos for you that talk all about it. We even went shopping at the mall and did a video on what to wear on a Royal Caribbean cruise. And that particular video shows examples of clothing at the mall that apply to every type of day on your cruise. So from what you wear around the ship during the day, what you wear to a normal dinner, what you wear to a formal dinner, and that one's really fun. So try to find the um, the Royal Caribbean dress code type video that we made. Okay, this one just came in from Canada. Okay. How do you avoid gaining weight during a cruise? <laughs> I don't avoid gaining weight on a cruise. I usually gain a little bit of weight on a cruise. I lost two and a half pounds on one cruise. It was actually the first cruise that we ever vlogged on because I never stopped. I never sat still and I hardly ate. But I usually don't stop myself from gaining too much weight on a, from gaining weight on a cruise. I just try to minim, minimize it. And I think this is a very personal thing for everybody. And maybe you don't care. Maybe you, maybe you, want to not worry about it. And I want to say right now that I think that's okay too. My strategy is going to be different from your strategy, but I'll tell you what my strategy is. I don't like to eat sweets generally anyway, so I particularly try to avoid a lot of sweets and sugar when I'm on a cruise because to me that's an easy way to cut out something that I would just be trying for the heck of it and wouldn't really want anyway. I would rather have the fettuccine alfredo in a parmesan basket then have the cheesecake. So I'm, that's gonna be my indulgence. 
I also eat a ton of vegetables and seafood, but I like vegetables and seafood, so that's natural for me. So do what works for you, but it's your vacation. You know, I mean, I'd tr I would try not to worry about it too much. Drink lots of water, try not to overindulge in anything, right? It's just all about moderation. It's a hard thing though. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for the super chat. You're very welcome. I'm happy to answer your questions anytime, and you know you can private message me anytime. Here's a fun one. Okay. Rondro from Rondrovi. If okay. you get back on the ship at port, can you get off again? Yeah, you can. Sure. Yeah, it's going to be a pain if you're tendering, but if you're docked, you can walk right off again. And people do it. I've done it. Um, when we're in Puerto Vallarta, a lot of times I'll be like dirty and sweaty after a shore excursion. Go back on the ship, take a shower, walk off, and go to like the little shopping area and buy something. I know it sounds kind of weird, but I've done that many, many times. <laughs> Trends Travel B is going on Carnival Splendor. Oh. How's the spa rooms? Are they worth the extra ah, cost? That's a great question. Okay, so so watch our vlog from uh, our post cruise vlog from two weeks ago. The thumbnail has a bunch of balloons on the front of it. We talk all about the carnival spa rooms. Do I think it's worth it? Yes, if you and whomever is staying in your stateroom plan on using the thermal suite, um, totally. Great real estate, you're way up high on the ship, you're in a quiet hallway, and you're also really close to the pool. So uh, that's my short answer, but we go into a lot more um, detail on that. And I will add to that that uh -huh. the blog from that from our um our departure date is going up thursday and it's going to be super long and one of the reasons it's going to be super long is because there is a lot of spa footage we're actually going to show you our tour of the spa and then talk a little bit about the spa room so there's a lot there if you're interested you guys if you're not subscribed you gotta subscribe do that. Did you guys know what he's, do you know what he's talking about? He's talking about the Carnival Splendor Embarkation Day vlog where we went on a spa tour, which we've never done before. We've always thought it would be boring, but it was super cool. Um, Mr. Cruise Tips TV and even Junior Editor totally dug the spa tour. So that's going up Thursday, honey? I didn't know that. Good job. Mr. Cruise Tips TV is an editing master, guys. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot more time than you would think. Those of you who are here who are also vloggers, you totally know what we're talking about. It's it's because we want to get it right for you guys. You know, he wants the audio to be right. He like wants the music to match. You want to, you want it to be short, but you don't want to cut out details that people might want to see. So I just want to take a moment to thank those of you who are here in the chat that are cruise um, experts helping out with answering questions. I'm seeing a lot of that. So thank you, thank you, thank you to those of you who are helping me. I really, really appreciate it. Any other questions or do you want me to jump back into the chat? Um, checking my mic. There it is. Okay. Any thoughts on Serenade of the Seas, mm -hmm. Beantown, and Beach Cruises? Hmm. I'm not sure about that. I don't really have an answer for that one. I'm sorry. That's all right. I know. Amy Rogers had a question about how big is too big for cruise ships? Oh, Amy, I don't know. How big is too big? I think it really kind of just, I think if it's safe, they're going to keep growing, right? I mean, as long as you can accommodate. The thing I don't like about those big ships, the really big ships, is how long it takes to get off of them on a port day. So that concerns me. I say a ship is too big. If you're gonna put me on the spot and I'm gonna answer this question, I'm gonna say it's too big when people can't comfortably get off on a port day and when it can't be handled smoothly and when everybody feels like they're waiting in huge lines. And that's where the divide between cruising and a land vacation become greater. And I would say that's too big. So that'd be my answer. And that's right. If the activities create so many lines that you yeah. never get to go on them, then yeah. it's probably too big. I had a fun one come in. Sure, I'm ready. Actually, this, this is kind of one of those, you're not going to have a definitive answer on okay. it. But Jane would like to know if the food is good on Princess. I think, Jane, that the food is excellent on Princess. The last few cruises I've had, the food has just been exceptionally good. And I've had crab legs in the dining room a few nights, which you know is my favorite thing in the world. Sorry about the eyes, guys. I've got allergies a little bit, so I'm kind of, my eyes are watering. Please forgive me. You just don't happy. Huh? I'm just so happy. <laughs> oh, thanks, Tony and Jenny. You guys are so sweet. Editing ninja, editing master. Yeah, he's the bomb and he'll never admit it. He's the most humble person you guys will ever, ever, ever encounter. So he's not going to, he's not going to admit it, but he is good. And he's always looking for ways to be better. And that's what I love about him. That's usually how I make my mistakes. So trying to do something better, trying to test something yeah. new, getting yeah. caught in the, buy a new product loop. But here's a good question yep. from Tiffany Fernandez. Are the privately owned islands worth getting off or is it better to stay on ship? This is an easy one. I love the private islands. I just wish you didn't have to tender to most of them. But to me, they're some of my favorite ports, Tiffany. So don't miss them. Thanks, Mama Dot. 
Go ahead. I was winking at my mom. <laughs> well, oh, this is, this bye, is Paula. Old... Sorry, I was saying bye to Paula. She's That's signing right. off. Okay. From Jessica Ash, this is quite a while ago, cruising on Carnival Inspiration, a four-day cruise mm -hmm. in June, and it's her first cruise. Any tips Aww. on making the most of it? Okay. Jessica, start by watching our vlogs from Carnival Inspiration and Imagination. The ships are, so, excuse me, from Imagination, because the ship is almost identical, so you're going to get a lot from that. Um, on that cruise, I would very much caution you that because it's a short cruise, that you it's really important that you try to find ways to relax. What I find on those shorter cruises is that we go, go, go a little bit too much and you need to kind of tone it back a little bit. On the shorter cruises, don't feel the need to plan every moment of every day. Go into it and plan on hanging out. The sail away parties on Inspiration and Imagination are really, really fun. Don't miss that if you like a good deck party. Um, they have Guy's Burgers and they have Blue Iguana Cantina. Guy's Burgers are delicious and wonderful, and sometimes the line is a little bit shorter on embarkation day, so make sure that you hit that. Blue Iguana Cantina has breakfast burritos. Shh, don't tell anybody. It's a great secret. What? Did you mention check the fun times? Check the fun times? Yeah. For, for just in general? Yeah. Yeah, use your fun times. That's so true, Mr. Cruise Tips TV. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, yes, Moss Bloss, if you can book your next cruise on your Disney cruise and you know that you're going to be doing it, yes. Um, yes, Christopher, spa is usually cheaper on port days because they do have port day specials in the spa. You are correct. Marion wants to know what is tendering. Marion, that's a great question. Tendering is when you can't dock the ship at a port. So for one reason or another, there has been no dock or pier built. Therefore, the ship will anchor off of the coast a little bit and take small boats to take you off of the ship and to the shore. That process can be, it can be a little bit lengthy because sometimes they use the ship's tender boats or emergency lifeboats to do so, but sometimes it can be made a little bit more efficient by the fact that they will rent boats, which are much, much larger from the area that they're tendering in, and that can make it a lot faster. I hope that answers your question. Um, Caitlin, is a 12-night cruise too long? You're afraid you'll be bored? To me, no. It sounds like heaven. In fact, I now am at a point where because of my level of keyed upness in my normal everyday life, I actually have a difficult time relaxing on a seven night cruise. And I found that 10 night cruises are better. 10, I, I've never been on anything longer, but I think longer is better because by the time you relax into these cruises, sometimes it's time to get off the ship. If you're the type of person that gets bored, there will be lots of activities for you. And if you have lots of ports and things to do, you might enjoy the rest of having those extra days. All right, um, I've never Maggie booked with Costco, but I've heard very good things. So there, I know there are actually people, I believe here in the chat who have booked with um, Costco. Thank you, Wicked Wonder, for reminding everybody to give a thumbs up. Um, Tamara, I have never seen whales when tendering. I have seen whales from a cruise ship, just to answer that. Amy, you should get priority tendering with your suite, but it depends on the cruise line. Usually the answer to that is yes. Lushy wants to know, do you ever get annoyed at the short time you have at a good port? And heck yes we do. I was so annoyed, Lushy, at how short of a time we had in Colombia. Ugh, Cartagena on our Panama Canal cruise, it was like 6 a.m. to noon or something. It was horrible. So I know that sometimes things happen and the cruise lines have to shorten a port stay, but you know what? It is one of my biggest pet peeves, a short port day. Absolutely. Um, Christina wants to know where and when do you sign up for Dr. Seuss breakfast on the Splendor? Excellent question, Christina. There will be sign up tables all over the ship by the pool deck. Even early in the cruise, you can sign up. Usually it's later in the cruise on one of the last sea days. If that does not, if you don't see that happening, go to guest services and ask them early in the cruise and they will let you know. Thank you guys so much for all the thumbs ups and for everyone subscribing today. We really appreciate it. Wow, Hunter is here in the live chat from Oasis of the Seas. He said he likes that Royal does not require a credit card but gives you up to $500. Do you know if Carnival allows it? I don't know exactly what your question is, Hunter. I'm not sure what you mean by that exactly, but clarify for me. Let me know. Um, Rhea Bell said, my son and I are doing our first cruise, a 14-day Hawaii cruise on Carnival. Any tips on maybe a long cruise comfortable for your 11-year-old? 
Wow, Rhea, that's a tough one. I don't know where you reside and what areas interest you, but we sure enjoy 10-night Alaska cruises. There's not very many of them, but we like those. Maybe a land and sea combination with your 11-year-old to take the train to the interior of Alaska. Maybe to go see Denali. That could be something that would be fun. All right. Okay, guys. We're on my, that's my alarm to remind me that in five more minutes, we're gonna tell you um, what to do to do this giveaway. So don't do anything yet, but at 12.50, we'll have you get started. Okay, Jane LaGrega wants to know, what's your best excursion in Alaska? You know I can't name just one, Jane. Love the White Pass Rail in Skagway. That is a real treat. Um, last time we were in Ketchikan, we got to go to the Alaska Rainforest Sanctuary and see bears, and that was really, really special as well. It is my dream to go flight seeing somewhere in Alaska as well. A helicopter to a glacier is wonderful if you can afford it. It's very expensive for us, so that's tough, but hope that helps you. All right, Christopher Gardner said, any Lido food hacks like Guy's Burgers with egg at the breakfast switch? Oh, I wish you could, I wish that they had um, Guy's Burgers in the morning, but they don't, which would be so cool. Lido food hacks, hmm, depends on the cruise line. On Princess, there's a fun little hack. On Princess, they have a mid-afternoon special buffet that they set up where most buffets would close between lunch and dinner. On Princess, they do this snack area that usually has something like a huge row of desserts and they're really hearty snack section like nachos or build your own sandwich or something like that. And we did not know about it until like the middle of one of our cruises. And it saved us when we had been on a long excursion and we were starving even after lunch, but dinner was too far away. You go straight to that. Okay. Um, Tamara, have I ever lost a hat or a dress because of issues with the wind? Yes, but the funny thing is not on a cruise. It happened to me in Victoria, Canada. We were on a sightseeing bus and we were sitting on the upper deck. I lost my husband's hat that he lent to me right off the back. It was very sad. Traumatized our son. Traumatized our son. He cried. He was so upset about the hat. It was funny. He still talks about, he still it. Talks about it. Yeah, he's not forgotten about that hat. Okay, I know that we have um, a lot of different questions coming in. I want to make sure that we watch the time here. Okay, tips on an Alaskan princess cruise in May. Oh my gosh, Shorty12341. I don't even know where to start. I have so many tips for you for Alaska cruise in May, but my biggest one is going to be replay this back a little bit and listen to my tips about packing. You need a baseball hat, you need a rain layer, you need lots of layers. Watch our videos. And in May, I actually have had much better experience with the weather than you would think. We haven't had rainy experiences, so it's been great. Okay. Do we collect ship models? No, Maurice, we don't. We have a pretty small house, and I'm an anti-clutter person. I do not like clutter and stuff, so I don't. I collect one thing only in my life, and that is Le Creuset cookware, which some of it is actually right behind me in my one and only little china cabinet that I have, but I don't collect ship models. I know that it's a really cool thing to do, but I just don't have a lot of space for them. Okay. Oh, oh, somebody's suggesting dog mushing in Alaska. That's a really, really good one. Um, I know, right? Thanks, Tommy. You're so funny. The best and fastest hour in cruising. I know, that should be like our new tagline, huh? That's so funny. Um, Kathy said, is booking an excursion on Shipmate just as safe as on the ship? Yes, it definitely should be. Most of these tour providers, you guys, by the way, are generally very well vetted. If they're on a site like Shipmate, you're probably fine. So I would definitely recommend that you do that and just read the reviews before you book with any other tour provider. Okay. Cindy wants to know, what is our favorite cruise line? You personally love Carnival. Cindy, it's funny because we get asked that question so, so much, but we really enjoy cruising with all the lines that we've cruised on before. We've loved Norwegian Carnival, Holland America Princess, and, um, and Royal Caribbean. We've spent the least amount of time on Royal Caribbean. We've spent the most amount of time on Princess. We've also sailed a lot with Carnival, but I have, um, I have a soft spot as well for Norwegian because I really love their specialty dining and their freestyle concept, so it's tough. I can't give you a favorite. Okie dokie. Um, let's, all right. Let's settle the debate for Megan. Okay. Do you see it? No. 
Please settle a debate between me and my hubby concerning swimsuits for a seven day cruise. He thinks two bathing suits is enough. I think three to four, especially since our kids live in the pool. Uh, oh, and you're, you're on the spot now. Megan, it depends. For my son, two is enough. I don't, I usually do not pack three for him. I only pack two. For my husband, two is definitely enough. For me, I'm going for like four. So I hope that's okay. And I did not deepen the debate. Um, cruising with an eight month old baby, yay or nay? I'm biased and I say absolutely yes, but I, I have to tell you that one of my favorite cruises ever was when my son was one. And my second, one of my second favorite cruises was when he was one and a half. It's very special when they're little and they're actually easier when they're that age, in my opinion. And they sleep so good. They sleep like babies on a ship because the ship kind of rocks. I'm totally, if you are, if you want to travel with your child, please do it. Um, I don't know, Kit, if people use the pools on Carnival to Alaska. They better keep them warm, though, or no one's going to be using them. Um, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Thanks, Tommy, for answering that question. I appreciate it. Um, what is my go-to food on a cruise? Cindy, omelets in the morning. I definitely love the omelet bar on most ships. Um, I really appreciate, this is bizarre, and you guys are going to think I'm really, really weird, but I love that Princess has salad in the morning at breakfast. I like omelet and a salad for breakfast. I know it's absolutely bizarre. Other go-to foods, I like a lot of seafood. I love crab legs. Um, when in doubt at dinner, I'll order grilled salmon and something else. Hope that helps you a little bit. Okay, guys, it is nine minutes before the end of the live stream. Now you get to enter for a chance to win this travel on ID and passport holder. This is the travel on ID and passport holder that makes you a cruise nerd. It is the one that I wear on every cruise. All you have to do right now, you have from now until 1 p.m. to enter in the comments of the live chat, not the replay. I know a lot of times we do it that way, but we're doing it now. How do you use Shipmate app or cruiseline.com? That's all you have to do. And we're gonna randomly select a winner this week sometime. Okay, so let's get back in and answer more questions. You guys, I'm so sorry about the eyes. It's just total allergy day for me. Please forgive me, it's so gross. Okay, Tom, what has been your favorite cruise trip? By the way, call me Tom. I can't call you the legendary diamond miner, but that's way more fun. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, um, we've had a lot of favorite cruises, but there are some that really stand out to us. My hu husband and I went on um, <clears throat> Holland America's Osterdam, or was it Westerdam? I don't remember. Um, back in like 2006, before we had our kid, and we went to the Caribbean, and we just had the time of our lives. The food on Holland America was really exceptional, and our stateroom was great. We had an aft-facing balcony. We just went to a lot of really great places. Congratulations, Mary. We're, gl we're glad to have you as part of our tribe. She's a new subscriber. Um, so that was a really good one. I have definitely have a soft spot for Alaska too. Tom, I really start feeling the pull at this time of year. It's Alaska cruise season and I really get this like, oh, I get this crazy urge to go to Alaska. Usually we go every couple of years. We, we generally can't afford to go to Alaska every single year, but right now, believe me, I am watching like a hawk for last minute cruise deals to Alaska because we would like nothing more than to jump up um, to Alaska this summer and put all of our, our rain jackets and um, waterproof shoes to work. It's really special. All right, I'm seeing some awesome information coming in on how you guys use Shipmate app and cruiseline.com. Keep them coming, keep them coming. Okay, let's get in here and find some questions. Um, da, da, da. um you have any ready for me? Yes, I do. Okay, let's go. Now, this one, I know there's not going to be a definitive answer, but mm -hmm. L. Griffin would like to know, out of the following ports, which have tendering? San okay. Juan, Dominican Republic, Amber Cove, St. Thomas. Ooh. Um, San Juan, I think, docks. St. Thomas docks. Dominican Republic, I don't know if in, like, La Romana. Tommy, do you know if you dock in La Romana or if you tender? Um, what's the other one? St. Thomas, Amber Cove. Amber Cove. Dominican I'm Republic. not sure if it, Amber Cove, I think you dock in Amber Cove. I think that's one of the private islands. Michael, thank you so much for the super chat. Now, isn't there also a possibility, though, that if there's too many cruise ships in, you're yeah. still going to end up You could tender. Yeah, we had that happen one year in um, Juneau, which was really weird. 
there were like eight cruise ships in town and there weren't enough places for them to dock and so we had to tender and it was a pain in the butt and it was raining. Can't Ryan wants to know about excursions in the Mexican Riviera. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, that's okay. There's so many. Ryan, um, one of, some of the best things that we've done in the Mexican Riviera, Puerto Vallarta, zip lining, day pass at Nail Amber, Cabo, we like to take a water taxi to Madano Beach and go to Billigan's for the day. But there's just a ton to do. Watch our vlogs from Carnival Miracle and the ones that are coming up um, this next few weeks from Carnival Splendor. I'm ready. Kathy Kinman uh -huh. would like to know, or actually is cruising on Splendor in March 2019 and would like to know if we have any tips. We should, yes. We have lots of tips for Carnival Splendor. Um, Really, you're, watch our vlogs that are coming up too because we're going to be talking about tips as we were on the cruise. So things that occurred to us while we were on the cruise. Definitely recommend that you download the Hub app. It's awesome and it really gives you a sense of like power over your cruise experience. You don't need your, your fun times because it's right there on the app. You can chat with your cabin mates. You can chat with other people. This is for five bucks, by the way. The app is free, but the chat is five dollars per person you can buy your internet package through it you can look at the deck plans through it so that's one thing that i would definitely recommend for now but keep watching our vlogs for more okay ready mr cruise tips tv lots of new ones coming in lots of new questions okay i can work on those marion any ports that have a reputation of being less than safe especially west Western Caribbean, maybe maybe a Jamaica at times, it, but you really, if you stay on the beaten path and take a sanctioned cruise line um, excursion, you should be just fine. Okay, Amber Cove is docking, guys. Yes, Jessica, we've been on a Thanksgiving cruise last year and it was really fun on Princess. They didn't do a huge amount for it. We did have um, Thanksgiving decorations and Thanksgiving food. Um... <laughs> Um, Jenny Joy, Carnival is not very strict with luggage size. It is nothing like flying. You really don't need to feel restricted in that way. You should be okay. Um, Laura, we have gotten a complimentary cabin upgrade once. We, um, my husband's birthday cruise a long time ago, I'm thinking like eight years ago when my son was about one. We got upgraded from a mini suite to a suite and it, boy, was it nice. Oh my gosh, hasn't happened since. Actually, on Caribbean Princess, we were up, upgraded from an inside cabin to an outside cabin, but it was a small, no, it was a free upgrade. And then we paid a little bit to upgrade to a balcony. We watched the prices like a hawk. So, yeah. So for those of you who haven't checked out our sponsor, cruiseline.com, and if you're new to this and you're like, who's cruiseline.com? You wanna check them out using the link in the description below. Scroll all the way to the bottom of the description, you'll see it there. It's a wonderful resource for you all. Um, Robert, Cozumel is safe if you stay in the populated areas downtown, the resorts for a day, the beaches and things like that, all very safe. Um, Cindy, formal nights on Princess Alaska cruises vary based on the duration, but usually it's something like the second and fifth or second and sixth night of your cruise. Um, Chris, Krista, I have not heard that um, Aruba is unsafe either. You just really want to stay in populated areas. Okay. Yes, you crazy for Carnival, a Christmas cruise will feel very, very Christmassy. Um, Carnival does it up well, and we've had so many subscribers say that it is the trip of a lifetime, so I think you're going to enjoy it very much. A little less so on Thanksgiving cruises. Okay. Okay, thank you, Tommy, for answering the question. La Romana in the Dominican Republic does have a pier. Thank you so much for looking that up for me. Um, does Royal Caribbean do midnight buffets? I don't know. Does anybody know if Royal Caribbean still does that? Will we ever do a Disney cruise, Tamara? If we can afford it, yes, but they are literally three times more than what we spend on an average cruise. So for right now, probably not. Hassan Aslam, yes, we are American. We live in America. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Rebecca said, do Alaska cruises only leave from Seattle? No, they do not. Alaska cruises leave from Seattle. They also leave from Vancouver, Canada. They also leave from San Francisco. Some are leaving this year from Los Angeles, and they also go um, to other ports like Seward and... Um, I don't know if it's Anchorage. I think it's Seward. So on the on the north and southbound, you might start in Vancouver and end in Seward, for example. So you're gonna do like an almost like an open jaw where you're you're leaving from one port and landing in another. Okay. Um, Nina, we have a ton of Alaska cruise tips, but because it's so late in the live stream, we only have one minute left. Please watch our Alaska videos. You're gonna find Alaska packing list when you click on the videos tab or the playlist tab. Okay. 
Got it. That T-SIN, that's a really fun idea. Do a live chat on how to use Cruise Line to help you save money. I'm going to give you my biggest tip right now, T-SIN. On CruiseLine.com, the best tip that you that I can give you to save money is to set a price alert on your cruise. When you're searching for cruises, you do not have to have one booked. You just pick the cruise and you pick the date. CruiseLine.com will email you when the price goes up or down. If you see it going down, you jump on the phone to your travel agent. I've had literally five, five, People tell me this week how they saved money using um, the price alert. They call their travel agents. They saved one ninety nine, two ninety nine. They upgraded to a balcony for twenty bucks. Like you'll hear story after story. I use it on every single cruise that I book. I set a price alert. That's my number one tip for you. Okay. Um, Cozumel's great, Chelsea. We love a beach club called Nachi Cocom. Oh, that's a good one. Anita said you found last minute cruise deals using cruiseline.com. Does anybody know for seize the day if there's any beaches within walking distance of Key West? Um, Shannon, best defense against seasickness for first timers. Um, there's a lot of different methodologies you can use. I'm going to run through them as fast as I can. If you know you're going to get motion sick, you should probably go to the doctor and get a prescription. Otherwise, there are C bands, which are available at the drugstore that um, operate on your P6 point. We also recommend the Relief Band 2.0. It is a heavy hitter for. Um, for motion sickness and it is a device that sends um, waves through your P6 point to your brain to combat motion sickness, to help with motion, uh, chemotherapy related nausea, pregnancy related nausea, all of that. It's an excellent product. So um, Nicole, imagination does heat the pools, but they could probably heat them a little better. Thank you, Robert, for the kind words. Really, really appreciate it. Okay, you guys, we're about ready to wrap up. Right now, I'm so sorry if I've missed your questions. If I have missed your questions, what I'd like for you to do is send me a private message on Facebook or over on Instagram, or all, you can always leave your questions here after the saves to replay. I will not see them if you, if you put them in the live chat though. We will let you know through every social media outlet in here on the community tab if we are able to go live from Norwegian Bliss. That would probably be on Friday, May 25th with me and the little junior editor. Thank you guys so much. Thank you very much to the cruise experts as well as all the newbies that joined us today. We love our tribe. Until next time, we'll see you on the high seas. Cruise around the week. <laughs>